Alright, this is game two of Bronze Bootcamp, hosted by the Trinity Force Network. You can check us out at trinityforcenetwork.com. Talked about it a little bit before game one, but um, episode 287 is up. Support her, I hardly knew her. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. We talk about a Patreon, basically a Q&A. Um, we help answer a lot of his questions that he's been having. Um, he is somebody who does Bronze Bootcamp and battering a lot. So if you um, like this kind of stuff, you may like that as well. Um, although you probably do listen to it. You can also check out the T-Force Frank Forward to Victory t-shirt. Um, pretty good stuff. Um, I'm personally not going to buy it because I think banners are a terrible item. But you guys can if you want to. So about um, four podcasts. Didn't talk about Oslo or four words much last time. But four words, um, once again, something I would check out if you're in Bronze Boot Camp. Pretty good podcast for newer players. They also interview higher level players as well. So um, I think those interviewed episodes are very invaluable. I've been on a few of them. So um, if you have any more questions about Bronze Bootcamp or feel like checking out Battle Arena, um, the Battle Arena tab is the place for that. The Battle Arena is the same thing as Bronze Bootcamp, but it is um, gold one and below. So if you feel like getting feedback while you're playing better players, um, certainly something really awesome to check out. If you want a link to the Twitch where the games are shown or where they're uploaded to on YouTube, you can also check that out. And you can also um, hit sign up here and you can sign up. This is where I send invites out and I send them out in order. So the earlier you sign up, the better. And um, be around when the games are starting because, I mean, these games are filling up instantly. Also, you can check out the community tab, um, TeamSpeak. Everyone's usually chilling, playing games, doing stuff. And you can check out Reddit slash T-Force Network. Some good stuff there. I, I don't know. Just some good stuff there. Um, Patreon tab. Also good to check out as well. Um, one of the things I help out a lot with is the replay reviews. We're doing quite a few of them now. Is send in a replay, review it. Um, I do most of them, but you, you can request anyone in network you want to do them pretty informative stuff and you can also be the 100th person to subscribe to the champion select podcast um at 99 so 100 would be pretty cool and if you think you are level love at number 100 let us know um we might be able to hit you up with something special um really really informative stuff i may or may not be on one soon but um basically they break down a champion in depth for like an hour with a masters or challenger level player so it, even if you do or don't play these champions i mean it's good information if you want to play them in the future if you want to know how to play with them on your team um if you want to know how to effectively play against them or just increase your overall game knowledge um how do you send a replay so basically when we do replays for the um patreon on t-force i ask that people send them through ooh gosh replay.gg so um, I'll type that in chat replay.gg it's pretty simple you sign up for it and the replays get sent to your email and it's a link really easy to share with everybody um, the mic sounds a little bit off I don't know how to describe it I'll check it out give me a second you guys might get reverb for a second so mute the mic and the replays get sent to your email and it's a link really easy to share with everybody um the mic sounds a little bit off i don't know how to all right it sounds normal to me maybe you just don't like my voice very much all right i'm sorry if it does sound off i just can't tell and i you know, honestly i don't know how to fix it so um it doesn't sound unlistenable i'll try and figure it out after the show and try and make sure that you guys have the best quality possible but we'll go into the battle arena select screen. So, talk about lane matchups a little bit here. Um, we do have Zach and Navai. Talked about Zach and kind of how Zach works a little bit before game one. Basically, he's a tanky jungler that's pretty good at ganking early, and he's really good at get, at ganking mid. And champs that gank mid usually stick to ganking mid a lot of the time. Um, he's good at ganking other lanes too, but um. Just you, you can snowball mid really, really hard, and then mid snowballs the rest of the map as well. Um, in this matchup, Zach versus Vi, similar ganks pre six. Um, Vi's ganks are a little better at six, but they're both really good, and Zach kind of outscales. But they they actually have pretty similar power spikes. Although Zach is kind of 
more ganky and Vi is more bruisery. But um, assuming Vi goes Warrior, I really don't want to talk to the Jody. I have an invite from Jody that is on hold. Is that for next game? Thanks. I don't know if it is or not. Two Guns Twitch. Um, I also don't know if we will have a game three or not. I have to see if I have to go into work or not. So <laughs> we also have LCS going on. But we'll, we'll see. I'll figure it out and I'll do the best that I can. Um, mid lane we have Zed versus not Zed. I can't even talk. Talking for an hour is getting to me. Um, we have Yasuo versus Brand. Um, couple things here. Really don't like you on Brand. I think if you take a defensive summoner spell against Yasuo, it kind of has to be um Exhaust or Bear. I like Exhaust quite a bit here against Yasuo as Brand because Brand can kind of bruiser and fight him out. Um. The barrier is pretty good too. You take barrier over heal because you assume that you also is gonna have ignite. Um, ignite kind of counters heal, so he's in dif a difficult spot now. Um, as far as the matchup goes, Brand E isn't affected by Wind Wall, and this is actually a matchup I max E on Brand because he can't dodge E and he can dodge the rest of my skills. I max E on Brand. Because I can just walk up to um, Yasuo, auto attack him, and E him. Whereas he can dodge my W and he can dodge my Q. Um, I'm not sure if that's how every brand plays the matchup, but I play brand quite a bit and that's how I play the matchup. Um, yeah, um, you, you E him, and then if Yasuo does try and retaliate, you try and make sure you're not standing near um, one of his creeps. And then you just Q him. Because the E is already on him. He's stunned. And then EW. So um, E auto, E auto, E auto. Um, don't want to waste mana from your other spells. You will run out of mana. If you think you have a really good W, you can take it on the wave. But E auto is pretty strong. Um, if he also tries to retaliate, he Q. It's actually a pretty good matchup by Bran. It's a bad matchup if you cast your spells randomly and you get baited out over and over again. So um, we'll, we'll see how that kind of goes. Um, as far as the Oscillus perspective... You basically just want to dodge Brand's skills and try and land um, their Qs on him. And when your jungler comes is when you're looking for kills. Brand's pretty easy to kill. And assuming this Brand maxes W and doesn't max E, even though I think he should max E, he's going to push the wave some. So I, I would just bang my Zac out and tell Zac, like, kill this guy. But, um... Bot lane, we Jinx Braum against Severjana. Silver Janna wins this lane pretty hard. Uh, any lane with Janna is usually a strong lane. Janna's just kind of a broken champion. But um, Silver Janna's really strong. It's, Silver and Janna are both really good at trading. Um, Jinx Braum really don't have enough all in to kill a Silver Janna. And the Silver Janna can kind of push and deal with ganks. So pretty strong lane. Just want to respect the Zac. Zac is the only thing that can lose this lane for them. Um, as Jinx, you just want to hit all of your CS to the best of your ability and scale. I really don't think this is a lane you should be retaliating in. Um, you'll probably just lose trades really hard if you try. Um, as far as top lane goes, we have Nautilus against Heimerdinger. This is probably going to be the worst lane of this Nautilus's life. He, I don't know how to play it. I don't play against a lot of Heimerdinger top. I don't play a lot of Nautilus top. I'd assume you want to put points... And like some mixture of W and E, probably maxing E to kill turrets. And um, just push out. Um, have flasks so you always have that sustain against Heimerdinger. And just look for ganks in the map. The one thing you do do a lot better than Heimerdinger is gank and teleport. And the thing that you do a lot worse than Heimerdinger is uh, lane. So um, just... Try and do whatever you can to get out of lane and gank whenever you can. And just um, start flask early, have that sustain if you really don't have those opportunities to look for, and keep your CS up. Um, as far as win conditions for both teams go, the... Hmm. I don't know. I really don't see a lot of Heimerdinger, and I don't understand Heimerdinger that well. Um, they have a pretty good pick comp. Anytime you have Sivir and Vi, you have a pretty good pick comp. Um, especially around objectives, because you can take Skullder Crab and then press Sivir ult and Vi ult somebody. Um, Skullder Crab and Sivir have really good synergy. And um, just Sivir John is really strong lane. They have 
three lanes that should win and Vi and a good pick comp. So that their kind of win condition is win lane, win game. And just abuse Skullcrab Crab and Severn objectives. As far as blue team goes, I mean, they have a ton of CC and they have um, good scaling. The thing they don't have a lot of is AP damage. So, um... I guess they kind of get bailed out here because there's not a lot of people on the other team can stack armor, but they really want to come back late game. Um, if you have any predictions in chat on who you think is going to win this game, questions, comments, concerns, just any league related stuff, kind of running out of things to talk about by myself, um, feel free to shoot. I just put it in chat. Ooh. All right, so not as top, promise support. So, one of the big things I look for in these games, and we won't see it for a few seconds, is um, people who take their skills at level one. There are a couple of reasons not to do this. The biggest reason is you never know what's gonna happen at level one, and let's say you're playing Nautilus and you skill up E, because you think you need E for lane, and then you get invaded, he's actually going to do it. Alright, um, and then you get invaded on. And um, let's say you walk into this bush to ward and everybody's sitting here. If you had the ability to um, skill as quickly as you could, you could flash and then you could cue this wall. Or get out. Or let's say you walk here and everybody's here, you could just flash this wall. Um, or you could Q into flash, but ba basically there are some situations where you need Q. Or let's say you get invaded on right here, and you flash this wall, but you're at 50 health with ignite on you. Um, if you have the ability to skill, you could skill W and not die. But now, like, because you took E, you can't do that. And like, why? Why would you take E here? Well, we'll cover the reasons why. Um, really, really, there are none. There, there's nothing for me to cover. So. Like you can argue he's taking E because he's just going to take E and land anyway, but really, it doesn't matter what champion you're playing, it's really good practice to get into is not scaling until 150, or not taking a point in a skill until 150. So. Horse DC4. Did stream DC? I don't think it DC. No, stream didn't DC. All right, I'm kind of confused at what the Brahm is saying. So, we'll see. So, um, Brahm took W at level one. I don't really agree with that. I think it does absolutely nothing for your level one and you have two situations with w level one so you don't ever use it and then it's bad because you just go you can't use or you do use it and then they go oh my god this guy took w at level one i'm gonna walk up to him and start auto attacking him like endlessly and he can't do anything about it because he doesn't have a real spell so pretty pretty bad out of the problem and the Sivir and Janna just really need to be auto-attacking the Brahm as much as they can. Is as a Janna Sivir lane, get those autos in. And don't walk on top of them to do it. Um, as Janna, you should be threading autos, but most of the time you're shielding your AD carry. If you're walking on top of them and shielding yourself, that's... I mean, it's good that you're shielding because you're not dying. But you're kind of like wasting the shield there as well. Um, this not is not gonna have a good line. So he, I really don't like the null magic mantle here. I really would have gone flask. I think flask is essentially a GP ten in this matchup because you're gonna have to buy pots every time against timer in here, and um, just getting that GP ten because you might get denied some farm. Um, it's gonna be hard lane is pretty strong. So, Sivai going into the Zach's jungle. Raptors aren't. Okay, Raptors are up. So, this tells Vi a couple of things. The biggest thing it tells Vi is that the Zach went for a red into blue root. But, um, she really doesn't have a lot to do now. I don't like that jungle root a ton. 
So, I'm already doing a blue flash, so that's actually a pretty good gank top. And Nautilus, if I were not, I would just recall. Um, you can recall and TP back, and I'm reading, I probably won't be able to make this wave in the tower. And you don't have any mana. If you stay with that mana right now, you're really going to have a hard time farming this lane or doing anything. So, um, right now, um, I would be until... And TP back. And I would have beat in that bush, so Hammerdinger didn't know if he stayed or not. And being in this bush as opposed to walking back here and being, you're still getting EXP until the time that you back. Although Hammerdinger can't interrupt it, I don't think it's likely that he does. So, who is Zach? Walking through. So Bran really wants to f get an auto attack in to deal with the- yeah, that's not what he wants to not do, is W and miss. That's kind of what I talked about earlier. Um, in my CS guide I kind of talk about this, the Dota drill. You really want to look for creeps like that, where the creep is low and you know Yasa's going to hit it. Or like this. This is when you would W, because you know Yasa's going to walk up and hit that creep. Or that creep. And Or like this creep is going to get low soon. You could hit a W right now on Bran, or he's going to third Q it, but... Yeah, like that, because he's on top of low creeps. But, um, really, Brand's W is really expensive, and if you don't kind of understand the Dota drill, and that you'd want to be using it when they go up to last hit your low creeps if they're a melee champion, it's pretty hard to use well. And you also don't want to be using spells to CS on Brand, because it's such a mana dump. Really good gank by Zach, though. It's kind of what I was talking about earlier in the game. You see, the issue that Bran has is that he's bowling the Yasuo, but he doesn't have enough mana to kill him. So, just like walk up to him, auto attack him, and then. Whoa. Yep, so you get shield down like that, and then you E. Next time you can. And Yasuo is really. Whoa, E him. No. All right, he might be out of E range, so it's hard for me to tell. So, bot lane, the Sivir got killed, and the Janna got killed. That's pretty rough. Um, two pinks, though. So, they, they may come back. Oh. Well, at roughly 15 CS is equal to a kill. So, the Sivir isn't down too, too much. It's pickaxe to pickaxe. So, she, she can certainly come back here. And... As Bran, you really want to recall here. You probably can't bully him much more, and your wards are kind of iffy. Also, if you get hit with a Q, you are in a pretty bad spot. So, Vi's coming down here. So, as Vi, this is pretty bad. Um, Blue is really pushed, and this gank is really free. As a jungler, you really need to look gank first, then farm. Whoa, why would you do that? Alright, so, like, just walk around this way. If you would have immediately just gone here and walked around, you probably could have killed them. But you went really slow to do golems, and they had time to kind of get back and check things out. And then you sat around this. If this is warded, you just need to go as fast as you can and go here. So, like, if stuff is warded, you can still get stuff done, but you need to go fast. And as Brand, kind of what I talked about earlier. Ooh, oh. Alright. So, just react a little quicker and I'll see so you don't have to flash there, but that, that was pretty good. Um. I like the Zax buy, actually. The scrimmagers and Mobies. So, hopefully he can continue to pressure the map. That was more of an issue of his Yasuo um, overextending than anything. And this not really needs to understand when he should recall and when he shouldn't be recalling. That's kind of like the biggest reason he's falling behind in CS. I talked about that a little bit earlier, but um, once again, he wants to do what he's good at, and what he's good at is roaming. So, he's effectively pressuring that on the map well. So, as Heimer, you just want to take tower here. If you get a good counter teleport, you can take it, but... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I don't really see one. 
Your team didn't have really good wards behind you. Like, if your team had a ward here, you may have been able to do something there, but you guys didn't. So, at this point, the game is pretty close. Um, couple good ganks by blue team, by Nautilus and Zach, but the red team is winning in CS in all three lanes, and that is the biggest reason that they're ahead in gold right now. So they're up 0.2k, but they're down two kills. Last thing is really important. That being said, the game is very close. So, um, anybody out there in chat, who do you think is going to win this game? I'm pretty undecided. Currently. That's a really good ult by Braum. So, oh, I'm not sure why Vi didn't ult there. When is a good idea to get um, early mobies and junglers? When you just really need to pressure the map and you're doing well enough you can afford it. Like if you can get moby tier 2 jungle item it's pretty strong. Because you still have the sustain of a jungle item and the additional 30 gold per kill, but you have the boots and mobility as well. Whereas if you're really, really broke, um, going into the bombies is good because bombies lets you hard farm a lot of the time. But um, usually if you're playing a Cinder Hulk jungle, the two routes you're looking to go early game is Moby Smite Upgrade or Bombies Smite Upgrade. Or Smite Upgrade Tier 1 and then start building into um, Mobies. But just when you want to gank, basically. So Brand went for the guys, that's not bad. He really needs to work on his CS quite a bit here. If you do a blue and you do a mana to waste down. So tired. Alright, if you do a blue and you do have mana to waste on brand, usually you W the wave and then you E it. Not like that. Um, oftentimes you just W casters and E them, and you last hit the melees with autos. Easiest way to CS and it pushes the um, stuff pretty quickly. Wow, Jinx had dragon, vision on dragon and ult up. It's not good to do that though, like you see it a lot on a LCS. Because they know they're not going to fight for the next two minutes and it's safe to do that. But in solo queue landing phase is really important. And if you ult dragon and you don't get it, the Sivir and the John lane can play much more aggressively for the next two minutes. And it's the same as Ash. Um, sometimes in LCS you see cross map ults. Because Ash thinks it's pretty safe to um, do that because she's not going to fight for the next two minutes. In solo queue, you're really never safe from stuff like that. And if you ult on an Ash or a Jinx or um, a Draven or something, and they know you don't have that in lane anymore, they can really abuse it and pressure. What do you think about Heimer top? I've only seen him mid. I think he's better top laner. I mean, in my EO, I only see him top. I think he really gets outclassed by most mid laners. Occasionally, I will see him mid as a counter pick, but... Most mid laners can destroy his towers, and most top laners can't. So that's kind of why he gets stuck top. He's really somebody who relies on um, being in a lane where they can't use spells to kill his tower. And um, not as one of those lanes. So that's not how you use heal. Um, yeah. At least they got scuttle crab. The one issue with high top is sometimes. Ooh. You can kind of screw with your team comp a bit. Um, if you pick carry tops and solo key, especially AP carry tops, a lot of times you can end up in comps with no tanks, kind of like this one. But um, uh, you can win those games too. It's just a little bit harder.
To look at skills, anything interesting being maxed. No, nothing really stands out to me. I don't play some of these champions, so I don't know 100%, but um, of the ones I play, everything looks generally fun. Um, important note on Bran, I've seen this in a couple of BA games, but you usually always want to max Q last. Really good 1 point wonder, 50 mana, and it has a good AP ratio, and it also lets you apply your passive. So, um, it's really mana efficient poke at one point late game. Like when you're sieging, you can just throw, P throw Q for poke. Um, important note there is if you think they might engage soon, you don't want to do that, because you lose threat of stun, but... Oh, Sivir. So same thing, Sivir used Spell Shield there, and she didn't um, Spell Shield anything, or she didn't Spell Shield Jinx's W, and she lost threat of Spell Shield, so um, Jinx could shoot her W. Really important, sometimes you just don't want to use skills, because as soon as you use the skill, you um, lose counterplay to like a certain trade or a certain trade condition. But, I mean, she Spell Shield a Braum Q, that's fine too. I didn't see what was happening. Um, Vi, really don't like the six consumables. You don't really need six pots when you're jungling, especially two mana pots on Vi. Um, the long sword's okay, but um, I don't like it. I really don't think you need Trinity in this comp. You have so many tanks, but all right. So, like, biggest issue there is they just grouped really hard for brand. That's basically it. If you, if you group that hard on brand, you lose the fight. And Jana gave her team so many free stats and shields and heals. It's difficult. Hey, she's thirsty. So, um, important note about Sivir Q, and it's something I don't talk about a lot, is when um, you're playing Sivir, your boomerang has like a max range. And this is the same as REQ and same as a lot of these boomerang skill shots. If you're good at hitting the tip, and you can go into a custom and practice this with like indicator on or something, and you can hit the tip consistently, you always get the full damage from the front and back, even though you're only hitting it once because you're hitting the tip. Um, and it counts at the very end of the boomerang skill shot or the REQ, it counts the front and back damage. So. Looks like John and Brahm are posturing. This is not a good situation for John to be in. They should probably just dive her and kill her. So I actually don't like that out of Braum. As Braum, I would have queued her when she's like right here and probably just killed her with Jinx. It's an okay play because people are me on the map, but at the very least, queue her and don't kill her with Jinx, because then at least she's the threat that she's queued and she might get dove and she kind of has to back off. I don't know why you sit on queue there though. So, Knot's catching up in farm, and he got a good roam down. This is, Knot's actually in a good spot. He's at pretty, probably tied or slightly ahead of Heimer. This is kind of what he wants to be going for. Um, note on Bran, you really don't want to max, uh, get Leandris first on any champion besides Rumble. Wow. Let's we'll watch this fight in all the glory that it is. And once again, the not doing what he needs to do in the Heimer matchup. So, um, good out of him. But, um, we'll look at Leandris. Leandris does, um, max health. So, um, why, why don't you get Leandris first? Well, at this point in the game, nobody in the team really has a lot of health. Besides Nautilus and Brahma has a little bit. Um, but it, it does... 
twice as much to somebody with 4,000 health than it does to somebody with 2,000 health. Assuming same magic resist. So, just just not a really, really effective early game. And Brand, same thing as Vi. You don't need to dump this much mana into pots. Maybe two health pots, but um, three health, two mana is pretty rough. Wow. Zach's slingshot's so broken now. Zach's really strong after the last patch. Cinderhulk buff and slingshot buff. I think Zach and Ramus are two of the better jungles right now. Especially until you get to like really high high elo where people can play Lee Sin and Elise. I eat like Diamond 1 plus, but They're they're both good on this patch. Um what do I think Brand should have built? I really like Rylize, I really like Void Staff. Um Hourglass is also pretty good here in case they focus you. So he he had like three other three pretty good choices. Um, Void Staff synergizes really well with Leandri's. Leandri's, if you look at it, it's percentage um, magic damage. And um, that actually works with Void Staff. So if you have um, more penetration, the Leandri's does more damage. Whereas Leandri's doesn't have an AP ratio. So like Leandri's only scales with pen. And Blade of the Rune King is the same thing. Blade of the Rune King's physical damage, and it only scales with pen. Whereas... Um, Whatchamacallit, it doesn't scale to AD. I mean, I guess it scales to attack speed because you eat more autos, but that's why you see a lot of Zeds going a heavy armor pin build. Um, one, because armor pin's good at the rest of the Zed skills, but two, just having the um, extra penetration for the Blade of the Ring King is really strong. And Vi's doing a good job um, catching up on pressure some once she hits six. But. Uh, Heimerdinger needs to TP down at some point. He can't stay top forever. The big window Heimerdinger wanted to look for is level 11. The level 11 ult with his W is pretty strong. And um, he has that now, so he, he can certainly pressure the map. Yeah, that's so much damage. And a lot of AP champions, especially AP tops and AP jungles, um, your level 11 is really important. I know as a big fiddlesticks player, I'm usually looking for that as uh, kind of one of my more important power spikes. So um, Heimerdinger wants to be looking out for that too, and Brand does as well. Um, a lot of AP champions just get like a ridiculous increase. His R right now is 250. I bet it is 150 at level one. And like 100 damage per bounce is so out of control. Like just the difference you being 10 and 11 on Brand Aside from the health you get and the armor you get for leveling up, uh, like 500 damage if you hit 5 people with ult. Or you hit ult 5 times on 2 people, however you do it. But, um, good dive. It looks like the blue team, especially Zach, overextend a little too hard. But they got a killer too, so. Zach went Visage. This is a little scary. He really needs to make sure this problem is getting locket. The Brand and Heimerdinger have so much residual A AoE damage that somebody on this team needs Aegis or locket. I actually like locket a lot here. Um, it's a little bit harder to use after the patch. We talked about that on episode 286 or 85 if anybody wants to listen to it. But um... TLDR, it used to be 5 seconds, now it's 2, but the shield is more. So. Easy to use this game, though. Um, easy to just press it when you guys get brand ulted. So. Alright, so pretty big um, fight. A couple of things. The red team had five people there, and the Braum wasn't there yet. So the blue team really need to respect that Braum wasn't there. The other thing is Nambos never committed to that fight, and a lot of people got pretty low. In all honesty, he, he like probably could have done something. But...
Oh boy. No, don't go on server. Alright. Interesting teleporter or not. Not a bad one. He did save the tower, but So um both teams what they need to do to win. Um red team basically just needs to group and team fight. Make sure they have good a vision and use Jana to peel and then just kinda of abuse the fact that their comp has so much more damage. Blue team probably need to sit back and farm again. You only have one threat in Jinx. Um, if you really peel for Jinx, you're in an okay position, but if you don't, you guys are going to struggle. You guys don't have a lot of damage. And the not, I, I like most of Boots and Mobility and not Jungle, and I understand you're playing top, but you're roaming a lot as a top laner. That being said, dealing with Heimer and Brand CC and not having Mercury Chats is pretty difficult, so um, I would have gone for those. And red team forcing another team fight. Um, the biggest thing is red team is grouped, and you'll see that red team has five people here. And red team had five people, and they won that dragon fight as well. Whereas blue team is a little slower to react. Blue team may win this fight, but the they're making it much harder on themselves than they need to be. Um, you can always say like, "Oh, my team needs to fight when I'm not there. My team needs to fight when I'm not there." But if that keeps happening, at some point, like. It's your fault for not being there too. So, uh, but both parties are at fault at a point. Unless like you have to recall, but um, you don't have to recall like 10 times a game. Like it should be something that happens once in a while, but not consistently. Ooh. Siver got really unlucky there. None of her autos crit. What's IE 20%? Eighty times eighty, zero point six four, zero point six four times zero point eight zero. I mean, the odd, eh, it's not terrible odds actually. That's not that unlucky. All right, so um, both teams are posturing pretty well, or blue team is posturing mid well. And blue team also has three sweepers, so they're catching up, and honestly, they're playing these fights well. Really good heads up buy of Nellis to buy that um locket. So um, kudos to him. And it looks like Brahm is going into one too. Don't feel that you have to always have one. I mean, especially the new locket, like I don't know. Two banners isn't bad. Braum could also go into Mikhail's, he could go into a couple of things. Ooh. So blue team is doing a really good job of rotating around and taking these towers as five. Um, you jinx, that's kind of what you want to do, especially when you have comp with this much CC. But um, that is what you don't want to do is group for the brand ult that hard. And brand two, I don't really understand the mercury treads by. Um, I guess it helps a little bit with not, but you shouldn't be getting caught by not as brand unless not ults, and you can get caught by that. But Mercury Chits don't affect the not whistle. Um, they also don't affect the Zach knockup. So, wow, this this is pretty interesting. Red team is pressuring bot now. Um, big note: anytime you leave the jungle, and we'll look at. Oh, they actually did it. You want a ward and you want a sweep if you have sweepers. So the Vi could could have swept, but other than that, they actually played that pretty well. They warded on their way out. It's a good feeling when I go to say something and people do it. Not that um, I mean people need to be doing what I say all the time, but um, like as a mentor e men mentor, not mentor e. Yeah, I can't even talk today. Um, 
Heimerdinger, I think you want CDR in your build. I don't play a lot of Heimerdinger, but most of the Heimerdingers I play with and against usually go CDR item. Getting that ult on a shorter cooldown and being able to spam your abilities is pretty important. He has um, a couple abilities on just higher cooldowns, so it's it's helpful for him. Oh, looks like Vi is going. It's not bad. I really like Dead Man's play on Vi. Um, it really helps with landing cues, and you're far enough ahead you can get it. Whereas Frozen Heart's been nerfed a little bit, and it's not as strong. I don't know, Frozen Heart's a weird buy for me here. I guess it's okay because Jinx and Yasuo are their only two threats. But, um, in this game, as Vi, at this point, you just want to stack armor. I would have gone Ninja Tabbies, in all honesty. Um, they really don't have magic damage. And it's one of my favorite things to do against a comp that doesn't have a lot of magic damage. Is you can um, just get a like a locket or a banner on your team and get that aura. And you have these champions that are doing a little bit. Like the Braum and the Zac and the Nautilus. Those are champions that can't get void stuff. And they get punished by banner really hard. So you turn their comp from like a little bit of residual magic damage to none. By finishing that locket item. And it, it really makes it easier for the rest of your team to itemize as well. Remember that, that that 15 magic resist um, that everybody gains from the Aegis items is always 15 if they don't have magic pen. So, like, AP tanks, it's almost always 15 against them. Yeah. Um, some of them run a little bit of magic pen, but not really at this point. But, like, somebody like, I don't know, um, Senja or Brand, once they get Void Staff and magic pen runes and haunting guys, it's not 15 anymore because it's being cut as a percentage and it's being cut as a flat. But so you have a good, do a good job of not panicking and just getting back into base. I really don't know about that buy engage. And Brand, you want to lead with E. Um, leading with Q doesn't do much. It just makes your E and W do more damage, but if you lead with E into Q, you get that nice broken one and a half seconds done. Two second, two. Wow. So, pre pretty strong. And, um, important note, if I was playing Brand here, is they have three boots of mobility and no Mercury treads, so, uh, your stun's always gonna be two seconds. If you can land that, it's really, really strong. Heimer could go CDR boots if he's CDR blues. I doubt he does though. So Brad is going back. Do do. Ah, Gan's pretty exciting and pretty close though. I'll be interested to see who wins. John of the Zeeks and Sivir is pretty strong though. Good not ult and Sivir. Sivir really want to be careful not to walk next to Brand there. But um, blue team don't have numbers, you don't have Zack there and too little too late. So uh, once again, um, blue team has lost all of their team fights this game because they haven't had five people there. Really, an issue of the four people fighting when that fifth person isn't there, and an issue of that fifth person consistently not being there. But. Just, anytime you get into a fight like that where Brandel ends up on everybody, it's pretty rough. Um, also, Brand, I was confused because I hadn't saw him back in a while and I checked his gold. He's sitting on 2700 gold. I think he could have found a time to back. Um, between there and now. Let's say that fight did go a little bit worse and he didn't have those items. He really could have got punished for that, but it didn't go that much worse. So, um, One of the reasons Rylize is nice on Bran is I talked about how good Bran's stun is, the Q. I kind of talked about how you want to E before you want to Q on Bran most of the time. So you um, use that E into Q. If you E with Rylize, you have like a 45 to 50 second percent slow. Very, very easy to hit that Q and then go into the rest of your spells. Um, when they're slow, it's much easier to hit skill shots. 
So that that is one of the reasons Rylize has always been popular in Brand, if people have wondered. Um, one, he's kind of a tankier mage and he likes it, but that E into Q is very easy for him to hit. So, um, once again, um, not blue team this time at least, but a team is losing a fight because, whoa, they do not have enough people there. So, like, really, just do a head count. And now, even on the map, you can hit tab. Well, I can't hit tab. But you can hit tab, and it'll have question marks on the people on the other team that are Mia, and then just, like, look where your team is and figure it out. Not too. I mean, it's game sense. You'll get more of it the more and more you play. But it's not too terribly hard. So, I actually do like the random ones by those X. Recognizing that with Zeke's, this server is going to be critting a lot. So, um, need to respect Brandle a little bit more, but Brand, you really overextended there. So, um, I think both teams just kind of need to think about what they need to do to win the game. There really isn't a team going for Dragon, there really isn't a team going for Baron. Both teams are just kind of like walking around, like, I don't know. It's like Turf Wars. The teams are walking around on the map randomly, and like when one gang runs into another gang, they try and beat the shit out of each other. But it, they really don't know what they're doing. Um, not saying that you guys don't know what you're doing, but you really need to think about like what do we be need to be doing like right now to win this game. Um, speak of the devil, though, red team is getting their fifth dragon, and blue team is kind of getting punished for um, not knowing what they're doing on the map. So. A good fight out of blue team, but um, looking back on it, it's a bad fight. So, um, the reason it's a bad fight is you fought and you didn't have time to recall and get back to this, and really, really not great. They also have five dragons. You probably want a turtle. I think the blue team is going to lose pretty soon, though. I think five dragons in brand is a recipe for disaster. So, we'll see. That is one of the things that sticks out to me, though. The red team got five dragons and Nautilus roamed so much. As the Nautilus player, you really kind of want to time your roams with the dragon a little bit more. Um, by doing that, stuff like this won't happen. Like When you roam down by top, the, the least you want to get is a kill. The most you want to get is kills and dragon. So... He should be trying to get kills and dragon, but good play to red team. So um, I had such a bad early game, Jana. Yeah, the the biggest thing I saw of Jana early game is you just needed to auto attack them and shield Sivir, and kind of when they um, walk up to hit you, just key them. I don't know, there was just a lot of points where you were, weren't auto attacking in lane, or when you did go to auto attack them, you like walked on top of Braum. Just respect your range on Janna and get used to auto attacking them, but it, it'll come with practice. Um, well played by red team. So we'll break down this game. Um, unfortunately, I have some real life stuff that came up. So this will be the last game. Also, pretty tired from solo casting this. And my voice is getting very hoarse. Um, no puns intended. So, sorry for anybody who did sign up for game three. But um, stuff happens. LCS is on today. Um, it's a beautiful day outside, at least where I am. So um, we'll cover this game. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in chat. And um, we will um, cover the rest of this game. Alright, so um, we're going to cover this game. A couple of things for everyone to work on. Braum, um, you really need to take Q level 1. Taking W level 1 does um, almost nothing. 
Um, as far as landing phase is concerned, really watch your positioning. You could eat a lot more auto attacks. So, um, other than that, your build right here is I see you building a spirit visage. You really don't want to be building those greedy items as a support. Um, get something team oriented. Um, also, you're sitting on six items, which means you can't buy pinks and you can't buy elixir of irons. Yeah, really, until like 50 minutes, I should never see support with full inventory. Um, with no consumables, so that's pretty bad as well. Um, as face of the mountain, I also didn't see a lot of face usage this game either. So, um, really want to work on that. Nautilus, early game lane phase uh, against Heimerding, you want to start Flask, really useful. Um, essentially serves as GP10, shove out, TP back. Um, that's pretty effective. Really, I know that mobility boots help ganking, but Mercury Chads are pretty quintessential. Um, you really got CC'd out in some of these team fights. But the rest of the build is pretty good. Um, the Biggest thing I would say is try and time your roams with dragons a little better so that you're getting more bang for your buck when you do um, give up all that farm and give towers to go bot lane. Um, as far as Jinx is concerned, um, both AD carries really need to work on CS. Um, Jinx really wanted to have scrying orb here. Um, when the other team kind of has that many objectives on you guys, being able to scry them and being able to scry bushes in team fights is pretty useful. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see a lot else out of the rest of the um, blue team and red team's bot lane. Bot lane is kind of decided by ganks more than anything. It looked pretty even until that. But um, I, I think from the Jinx's camp, the CS thing was pretty poor. So, um, Yasuo, same thing. Like, last thing is pretty rough as well. Um, I feel, I feel like I'm not covering much, but it's, it is really hard to do this by myself. The build, um, sitting on Hex Drinker kind of delayed IE. It gave you some magic resist, but I think you could have done the same thing by just going Mercury Treads and then going IE. I don't think the Hex Drinker is that bad, though. Um, I think as Yasuo in this lane, you just need to do really well in lane. Try and freeze lane in front of your tower and then, like, get Zag ganks. You kind of just pushed or, like, didn't ward a lot at times. Um... Zach, you did really well with ganks early. Um, then you just kind of overextended and dove a couple of times. And Zach dying is bad. Dying and losing passive at the same time is really bad. Um, and in some of your dives, you did die and lose passive. So um, that's really something you want to watch out for. Um, build was generally pretty good, though, and ganks were pretty good early. Just um, work on finding ganks in the mid game, um, work on finding plays around objectives. And stuff like that. Jana really need to work on auto attacking in lane. Um, I it looked like you were misclicking and then walking forward. I would suggest um, auto attack move or a clicking for that. Um, shielding AD carry more often than not. And you had some AP on your Jana rune page. I don't know what you're running, but if you want to play a more aggressive Jana page, um, I play a lot of Jana. AD reds are good and attack speed reds are good and that'll give you a lot of firepower just to um, kind of bully people out with auto attacks on Janna. Um, after lane phase just really respect your positioning as long as you don't die you're going to offer a lot from your team. You can kind of play like a bitch in this this team comp. Um, yeah I think that's mostly it. Brand. Uh, first five minutes I was AA every time Jinx came up but once we got bombed. He didn't auto attack Braum though. You can auto attack Braum too. The big, the biggest issue I saw in lane was your auto attacks on Braum. You did a pretty good job with Chinks, but like Braum would walk right in front of you and you wouldn't auto him, which is kind of strange. Um, Zach, the biggest thing I saw too, going back to it, I'm sorry, we'll touch on um, Brandon in a second. Is um, both junglers need to like permanently smite race. Um, if you get warded out, your pressure stops fast. So, um, I also would have looked to gank mid a little bit more. He did a good job with other lanes early, but um, the brand was pretty gankable. He wasted flash a lot, um, especially when you went to gank mid and he wasted flash to kill Yasuo. You could come back pretty easily there, even though you may be upset at how Yasuo died. But um, Zach is kind of the king of ganking mid. Vi was taking my chickens, so um, brand. 
You sat in 2,700 gold at one point. That wasn't good. You could have got burned for that. Don't like the summoner spells choice against Yasuo. Talked about that before the game. Um, let's see what else. Don't like rushing Leandris. I think guys into allies is better. Um, you really don't want to lead with Q. You should. Um, you should E first and then Q. Um, especially when you have allies, you E, you get the slow. It's really hard to miss Q. Lane phase, you're Wing to. Um, push the wave or CS a lot. W is really expensive and Brand has a lot of mana issues early. Almost all of your spells need to be doing damage to them. In the Yasuo matchup, you really want to like auto attack him once and get rid of shield and then um, E. Good job in maxing E first, but um, just way too many of your W's missed and there are a lot of them you didn't have to take. Um, and so that you did good. I think it was mostly um, build and last hitting. I think the last hitting was like the, the biggest thing that stood out to me is poor. Um, if you want to push lane on brand and you have mana, you got blue buffs quite a few times. And this is the biggest reason the last thing was like really bad for me is 130 CS of blue buff mid is terrible. Um, w the casters, E the casters. Um, you may need to auto attack them once after that, depending on how much AP you have. And then you just auto attack the melees and finish them off. And um, in this way, you only have to get effectively three or four... Um, which I'm gonna call it last hits from auto attacks, and the melee ones are pretty easy to do, and um, the the cast just push for you, and you instantly shove out the wave. It's two spells, not too expensive, and it's pretty easy to do. So that's that's kind of how you want to push wave and CS on brand. I saw you kind of dubbing the melee creeps and um, some other things, but um, build last thing stuff like that. Um, Hammerdinger. If you buy a CDR item, you don't buy it third or fourth. You get it early game for the mana regen and stuff. So I would like to do that. I like the CDR boots too. Um, as to that, you play pretty well. I think the biggest issue is you never really followed with TP. You kind of got bailed out that your team didn't get, um, I don't know, screwed by the Nautilus too, too hard. But you played lane phase well. Um, if you're going to permanently AFK split push top, once again, I keep saying it, but you need to last it better. But, um... I didn't see a lot that stood out to me as bad, but I didn't see a lot that stood out to me as good. I think you just kind of played the game. I, I hate to say it like that, but you just went top, you didn't TP, you shoved tower, you didn't really get ganked, you showed up to team fights in your team one. It's kind of, I don't know, a day in the life of Heimerdinger. And I don't play a lot of Heimerdinger, so personally, I don't know. Um, I think you could use towers less in lane. Like, when not in lane with a lot of health and mana, maybe, like, don't push the wave as hard and try and freeze them out a little bit, but um Vi don't build Sunfire. Sunfire Cape is so bad on junglers. If you are not building Cinder Hulk, do not build Sunfire. Then do not build Sunfire on anybody besides top laners. It is so bad in the in junglers, it's so bad on supports, it's uh it's just really cost and effective and it's magic damage and you don't have magic penetration so like by the point you buy it they have an aegis um they have all this magic resist you're getting like 15 damage a second it's so 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 bad um brand ones is good dead man's plate is really really nice on buy it works when you're queuing, and it makes hitting Q a lot easier. A lot of I players I know are playing her more again because of Dead Man's Plate. So um, look at that. I think Dead Man's Plate is pretty strong right now. Sivir, um, same as Sivir from the last game. You really need to auto attack cancel if you play Sivir. Um, you use it. You just auto W, auto attack cancel. Um, as of that, I didn't see a lot that stood out to me. Maybe not ulting sometimes when you don't have enough people there to fight. Um, but. You guys should generally do a good job. I liked what you and Jonna did a lot in this game, and I don't know if you guys noticed or not. But when you guys died, you both bought a pink ward. And you both got so much vision control out of that pink ward. Not only did it shut Zack down pretty hard, your pink ward and the river made it possible for the Vi to start ganking your game and beginning to check up. And in all honesty, it takes a lot of, like, self-control to die in lane and buy a pink ward because you're frustrated you don't want to ward and you don't do things so um that's my shout out i think that was the biggest thing i saw from this game that really impressed me was the peace of mind of the Siver and jana to buy a pink ward after they both died so um really good job there but um good job to everybody um look at ward's place so once again the team that warded more won that is eight out of eight 100 percent of games 
And um, I mean, just Ward. I've I've been keeping the statistic for eight games at Bronze Boot Camp in Battle Arena, and in all eight games, the team that has warded more has won. Um, really look at red team. A lot of these green wards, a lot of these pink wards, and blue team just kind of lazy warding. So, um, really good by Heimer, good by Brand. Really, um, great team effort. So sorry, I can only do two games. Had some work stuff come up. Really work for the university, so pretty busy before the semester starts for me. Um, watch LCS. Go enjoy the day. Sorry, can't do game three. But um, any feedback. Feel free to send it to um, feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com and um, have a great day.